Now, within this immersion in clocks and synchronization, Einstein continues to ruminate on light and its speed, and it proves a potent mix. There's no way Einstein could have known it, but the solution to his decade-long puzzle about why we don't see stationary light, the solution to that puzzle is now just weeks away. Ah, I spent almost a year in vain trying to modify the ideas of Lawrence in the hopes of resolving the problem. Uh, by chance, a friend of mine in Bern, Michele Beso, helped me out. It, it was a beautiful day when I visited with this problem. I started the conversation in the following way. Recently, I've been working on a difficult problem. Today, I come here to battle against the problem with you. We discussed every aspect of the problem. And then suddenly, I understood where the key to the problem lay. Einstein left, and as he described it, a storm broke out in his mind. Light, electricity, magnetism, waves, frequency, motion, velocity, clocks, contraction, trains, transformation, simultaneity, synchronicity, space, time. The next day, I came back to Besso, and I said to him, without even saying hello, thank you, I have completely solved the problem. In the span of five frenzied weeks, the special theory of relativity is complete. And what Einstein finds is, by any conventional reasoning, utterly ludicrous. But a century of experiments have shown that Einstein was right, and conventional reasoning, dead wrong. The discovery hinged on an approach that future generations would label Vintage Einstein. Look at something that everybody else has been staring at for decades, maybe even centuries. Peel away all of the hidden assumptions and see it differently. In this case, here's how this all played out. Everyone had long assumed that our intuition, our understanding of motion remains valid, even at speeds far greater than any we've ever directly experienced. Einstein challenged this. Sure, you can chase after a car, making its speed from your perspective appear to slow down or even appear motionless. But when the speeds are as enormous as the speed of light, Einstein said that this reasoning is completely wrong. Instead, he found that regardless of how quickly you chase after a beam of light, the light speed from your perspective will not slow down one iota. The light will continue to race away from you at exactly the same speed because the speed of light never changes. The speed of light is constant. And that's why no one has ever caught up with a beam of light. And that's why no one has ever held a handful of stationary light. Puzzle solved. Or perhaps I really should say puzzle shifted because the new puzzle is, how could light speed behave in such a crazy way? Well, think about speed for a moment. What is it? It's a, it's a measure of how far you go compared to how long it takes you to get there. So it's a measure of distance, space, divided by duration, time. So when Einstein said that the speed of light is constant, that the speed of light behaves weirdly, he was actually saying that space and time behave weirdly. And that's what set off the storm in his mind. He realized that space and time execute a fluid choreography in which they adjust themselves in tandem to keep the speed of light fixed. And that's what makes this all such a big deal. I mean, no one would really care that much about some esoteric strange feature of the speed of light, but strange features of space, strange features of time, yeah, that matters. That speaks to strange features of reality. And Einstein was able to work out those strange features of reality, and he did it with nothing more than high school algebra. He found that if you have two clocks, one stationary and the other moving, that time will elapse slower on the moving clock compared to the stationary one. And it's not just that the clock's inner mechanism is running slow. Einstein found that time itself is slowing down, so all processes in motion slow from aging to thinking to twerking. <laughs> and completing the dance, Einstein also found that space behaves weirdly. If you have a couple taxi cabs, 
one stationary and another that rushes by at high speed, you'll find that the height and the depth of the speeding taxi cab unchanged, but its length in the direction of motion will be shrunken. And we're on to jump into that squeeze taxi cab. You'd think I'd crave some legroom, but actually, relative to my new perspective, it's the rest of the world that's rushing by me, so the interior of the taxi appears ordinary. And it's the outside world that undergoes all these wondrous distortions. At everyday speeds, these effects are too small for us to notice. But if we routinely traveled near the speed of light, that's fast enough to go around the entire Earth seven times in a single second. At those speeds, these effects, they would be obvious. We'd experience them all the time. But because we generally do not travel near the speed of light, it took the genius of Einstein to leap beyond everyday experience and figure this all out. Einstein completes his paper on special relativity in late June of 1905. And the presentation itself was peculiar. The paper did not have a single reference, and it began by addressing issues that the world's leading physicists would likely have considered in little need of exposition. If I say that train arrives here at 7 o'clock, I mean the pointing of the small hand of my watch to 7 and the arrival of the train are simultaneous events. A young upstart who'd yet to receive his doctorate instructing the world's leading thinkers on the meaning of the little hand. <laughs> but those who read Einstein's paper, they quickly realized that his singular focus on concepts that everybody else had taken for granted had changed our understanding of space and time. This relativity principle has brought about a revolution in our physical picture of the world, which in its extent and depth can only be compared to that produced by the Copernican world system Henceforth, space by itself and time by itself are doomed to fade into mere shadows. And only a kind of union of the two will preserve an independent reality. It came as a tremendous surprise. I really wouldn't have thought Einstein capable of that. For in his student days, Einstein had been a lazy dog. <laughs> With such a radical assault on established science, it is remarkable how quickly Einstein's ideas were accepted. In just a few years, German and British American physicists, they embraced the special theory of relativity. But even so, and especially as Einstein gained ever greater prominence, there were those who held to a different perspective. <laughs> it is part of Jewish physics, for the Jew wants to create contradictions everywhere and to separate relations, so that preferably the poor, naive German can no longer make any sense of it whatsoever. Einstein's work never was intended to be true. The Jew conspicuously lacks any understanding of the truth beyond a merely superficial agreement with reality. Einstein took all reactions, good, bad, ugly. He took them all in stride because he was saving his energy for the only truly worthy opponent the universe. And here in 1905, he had already scored a great victory, a triumph in round one. 